Good afternoon. We have some smoke in our sunshine because of Canadian wildfires. 64 are low tonight in Sioux Falls and Aberdeen. 65 in here in that hazy sky overnight with a low near 62 in Rapid City. Smoke lingers into tomorrow with a couple chances of rain or thunder showers in eastern Kelowland. 85 Sioux Falls, 84 Aberdeen, 89 in here and 94 with that smoky sunshine in Rapid City. Even warmer as we head into the end of this week. We'll take a look at that coming up. Kelloland's first at four starts right now. Live from Kelloland Media Group. Kelloland News first at four. Police officers in Minneapolis are getting a big pay raise. How it could impact public safety across the city. Plus, Miracle Treat Day and Dairy Queen is just around the corner. How one Sioux Falls DQ is getting ready. And later, July is now Disability Pride Month in Minnesota. How a group celebrated at the Minnesota State Capitol. Good afternoon and thanks for tuning in to First at Four. I'm Don Jorgensen. And I'm Kelly Volk. We have more information on a crash that killed a teenager and left another severely injured near Garrison. Authorities say two people were in a UTV last night when they lost control on a gravel road. The vehicle went into the ditch and rolled. Both people were ejected. A 16-year-old girl was killed. A 30-year-old man was taken to the hospital with life-threatening injuries. Authorities are still trying to figure out who was driving. Authorities have released the name of the man who died that a head-on semi crash northeast of Beersford. Early Friday morning, investigators say 28-year-old Darian O'Neill Klein crossed the center line in an SUV and collided with a semi. Troopers say that he was not wearing a seatbelt and died of his injuries. O'Neill Klein was from Oklahoma. After nearly 80 years, a World War II soldier from South Dakota will be coming home. U.S. Army Corporal Robert A. Bartlett of DeGray died when his tank crew was attacked by German forces in France in 1944. Two crew members escaped, but Bartlett and another soldier were never seen again, nor were they heard from. Bartlett's name was listed at the Normandy American Cemetery, where he was initially buried in northwestern France. To indicate his remains have been accounted for, a rosette will be placed beside his name. Bartlett will be buried on August 10th in Blunt. That's just a few miles north of his hometown. All right, let's get a check of our weather forecast. Kind of hazy out there, Megan. We have some Canadian wildfire smoke that is lingering in our air as we head into today, even into tomorrow. Right now, a few clouds actually starting to fill in the Sioux Falls area as well with that wildfire smoke. 80 degrees and a very light breeze. The smoke is prominent in western South Dakota, especially in Rapid City right now, 88 with a very light north breeze. Here's a look at our wildfire smoke again coming from Canada. Everybody in that darker gray has that thicker smoke. Luckily, it seems to be sticking in the upper atmosphere, not mixing down to the ground. As we went through today, some of our highest temperatures at and still below normal in central and eastern Kelowland and slightly above normal in western South Dakota, like 92 in Buffalo, and that 88 in Rapid City. We have just a couple clouds working their way to the south, mainly in eastern Kelowland. If we take a look under those clouds, we do have a few rain or thunder showers. Like there between Summit and Wabay, with a little bit of lightning still, and on the Minnesota border just north of Gary. As we go down towards Sioux Falls between Hartford and Humboldt this afternoon, a few light thunder showers. Those are slowly dying down as well. Now we could see a few more rain or thunder showers as we go through the rest of your afternoon. Those will die down after sunset. Could have some patchy fog by morning in eastern Kelowland. Smoky skies though, 64 are low in Sioux Falls and Aberdeen, 65 in Pier and 62 in Rapid City. Tomorrow is going to be a lot like today. Highs in the 80s, even some low 90s. Hazy sunshine, couple more chances of rain or thunder showers in the Sioux Falls area. We'll take a closer look at that, plus a big warm up on the way by the end of the week in just a little bit. All right, thanks, Megan. Minneapolis police will soon be some of the highest paid officers in the entire state of Minnesota. After some controversy, the city council signed off on a new contract. Jason Rontala with our CBS affiliate in Minnesota shows us what's in the new agreement and why the city's top cop says that it will help keep people safe. There are eight I's and four nays. 
that carries and the full report is adopted. In an eight to four vote, the Minneapolis City Council voted to approve the contract that will give officers a nearly 22 percent pay increase over three years, with rookie officers set to make more than $90,000 a year. This is a great day. The mayor and police chief both celebrating. Having the pay increases, having it being one of the one of the best paid in this state is absolutely necessary to retain the outstanding men and women of this agency and to attract the very finest young men and young women who are looking to serve. The new contract gives management the ability to put officers in neighborhoods where they're needed. It allows the department to assign civilian investigators, keeping officers on the streets. It increases paid leave for officers under investigation to up to 180 days and reduces the time it takes to fill open jobs. We did not make this decision lightly. Council members who voted both for and against gathered after the decision. While this contract in itself lacks sufficient and permanent meaningful reforms, um, I am pleased with the process in which we went about curating um, this uh, police contract process. Council members also approving a plan to pay for the raises with money generated from taxes on things like hotels, food, and liquor. It uses money that right now is not allocated to any purpose. O'Hara says the raises will hopefully bolster a department that's lost more than a third of its staff since 2020. This is a place where young men and women who truly want to serve uh, can really be a part of something much greater than themselves. In Minneapolis, Jason Rantala, WCCO News. The new contract applies retroactively from last January and runs until December of next year. Well, some of the Midwest's top skateboarders were on hand to showcase their skills at the 7th Annual Andy Langen Memorial Skateboard Competition in Sioux City. The annual event provides a platform for skateboarders of all talent levels to foster a sense of community and support. People are more apt to go out and skateboard instead of, you know, going up to buildings and skateboarding on their stairs and stuff, they actually have a place to go. And it's a lot of camaraderie here with the kids and stuff like that. We've got a lot of cool stuff here going on and there's a good vibe and everybody here is rooting each other on and we'd love to have you out here to check it out. The competition had three divisions from beginner to advanced with the top three contestants from each division taking home a trophy.